If you have some files on your computer that you'd like to share with a coworker or let's say a friend, but let's say that the files are too big to send through the email, you can copy them to a disk and there are three different types of disk you can copy them to. The smallest disk is the CD, which will store up to 700 megabytes of information. Then the next disk is the DVD, and that will store, if it's a single layer because DVDs can contain dual layers or double layers, a single layer will store 4.7 gigabytes. How does that translate? Well, there's a thousand megabytes in one gigabyte. So if it holds 4.7 gigabytes, that's about 4,700 megabytes. Now, if there's a second layer on the DVD or dual layer, it will almost double the single layer storage capacity, and it will be 8.5 gigabytes of information. Then up from that is the Blu-ray disc, and that will store 25 gigabytes of information, and it can also be dual layer or double layer. If it's a double layer, it will store 50 gigabytes of information. So I'm here on the folder, Exercises, which is on my desktop, and I have a bunch of files here, and I would like to copy that to one of the disks, but I'm not sure what size of disk I need. To find out, all you have to do is go ahead and select all the files that you want to be able to copy to a disk, and bring up the properties thereof, and it will give you the size of those selected files. For example, let's say that I want to select all these files. You can just click in a blank area here to select the window here, and then hold down the Control key and tap the letter A, Control A will select all the files within the folder here. Once all of them are selected, you can go ahead and right click on any selected file and then go down and click on properties and it will bring up all the files that have been selected including the one folder. So there's 15 files, one folder and the total size of all of them collectively is about 7.8 megabytes. Now as you recall, the CD will hold up to 700 megabytes so anything more than that like a DVD or Blu-ray would be overkill and a waste of space. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Now, if I didn't want to go ahead and copy all these files to a disk, just click off in a blank area. Select the files that you would like to copy, and you can do that by, well, clicking on the first file. Then to select additional files within the folder, hold down the Control key and click on the other files. And you'll notice that whatever I click on is part of the selection, so I have four selected. Then I can go ahead and right-click on any one of the four that are selected to bring up the properties for all four to give me the total size again for the four files which is approximately 4.7 megabytes of storage. Click off in a blank area or finally let me close out I can right click on the folder that contains everything that I would like to copy to a disk and go down and bring up the properties for the folder and there it is about 7.8 megabytes of information it contains 16 files in one folder the reason why it has that one extra file I don't know if you noticed this but within the folder when we selected everything it said 15 files is because there's a hidden file within that folder. It's one of those operating system files that will be hidden that when you copy it to a disk it should remain hidden unless you go to a special place to say I want to see all hidden files. Let me go ahead and close out. And you probably don't want to see all hidden files because they're part of the files that help make your system function so you don't want to delete those. Okay so let me go back in the folder, double click to open it up and then go ahead and select part or all the files that I would like to copy to a disk. So once I go ahead and I select a few, and I'm holding down the control key to continue my selection after I click on each one. Because if I don't hold down the control key and I click on one, I click on the next, it doesn't continue the selection. You can also click on one, hold down the shift key, and click on the end. When you click on the end, holding the shift key, it'll select everything in between. Once I have selected what I want to be able to copy to the disk, and I know it's going to be under 700 megabytes because we just brought up the properties and it's about, well, close to 8 megabytes of information. I can come up here on the command bar and there it is, burn. Now it doesn't say copy, the reason why it says burn because actually a little laser beam will burn data into the disk. It's a plastic disk. So when it burns the data in there, then you can go ahead and pull it out, give it to your friend, they put it inside their disk drive on their computer and a laser beam comes out and it reads the little indents or the impressions left behind when the laser burned the data into it and as the laser on their computer reads it, it reads those indents and burns and be able to pull up the information so they can either read it off of their CD or from the CD drag it from the open window or off of the CD just pull the information off of it onto their desktop on their computer. I prefer dragging the data or information off of the disk like if it's a CD or DVD onto my computer because the computer is faster at reading things but again I find that data is much easier to view or to work with when it's on my desktop and so I drag it all from the CD or DVD to my desktop. So it burns the information to the disk and as a side note the Blu-ray actually uses a blue laser that's why they call it a Blu-ray. 
And if you're curious, how come that the CD, DVD, and Blu-ray are all the same size disc and that you can store more information on a single layer for DVD or Blu-ray than you can on the CD? The reason is, is because the laser is more refined for the DVDs and it burns the data closer, it crunches them tighter together. So that laser is more refined and tighter. So it can burn more information on the disc than it could on a CD. So really all I have to do is go ahead and select the files, come up here on the command bar. If you can't see it, then go ahead and double click on the uh, header bar here to maximize the window. Then you can see all the commands on the command bar, then go ahead and click on burn. Just make sure that you have a blank disk in your disk drive there. If not, go ahead and put it in and then I'm going to go ahead and push mine into the disk drive. Give it five or ten seconds to pull up a little window that says, hey, I've got a blank disk here, what would you like to do? There it is. You can burn audio or music. You can burn files to the disk, data files, like you can see I've got data files here. And then you have other options of burning information or data using other applications. Now, like I said, you can either, in the window, go ahead and select the files and click on the command bar, burn, or if you get this that comes up after you stick your DVD in, you can also use this option, burn files to disk. When you click on it, it'll go ahead and say, okay, what's the name or the title of the disk? And you can go ahead and just start typing. You can only type in so many characters, so when you type in too much, it'll probably stop you right about here, in which case know that you want to abbreviate it. And then down below you get two options. Now if I go ahead and click Cancel, and let me come back up here and select the files, and then come up here and click Burn, it'll ask me the same thing. So still, let me type in a title, and then two options. Do I want to treat this CD or this disk like a USB flash drive? And then it gives you a little synopsis about it saying, look, you can save, edit, delete files on the disk anytime. So it burns the information, and then with the laser beam, it'll erase it and then burn it again. So after, I don't know, a thousand burns, it's going to look like putty after it burns, melts, burns, melts. And in any case, it only lasts so long. But if you do want to treat it like a USB flash drive where you can save, edit, delete files, then the disk will only work on computers running Windows XP or later, like Windows XP, Vista, and Windows 7. Or... What I usually do is I master the disk, saying that the files I burn to it cannot be deleted. It's on there, and the only way you can get rid of the files on the disk is to destroy the disk. So I go ahead and I select with the CD or DVD player, and they, of course, will work on most computers. Click Next. So what it does is it creates a temporary file, basically just an image or a copy of the files that I have selected behind it, and it puts it in here. And then it says, okay, are these the files that you want to write to the disk? Go ahead and say yes, burn it to the disk. If not, go ahead and say delete temporary files and then try again. And you can see I get that little pop-up says, hey, you got files that are waiting to burn. So let me go ahead and come up here, click on burn to disk. And it says, okay, here's the title. You want to leave it that way or do you want to change it? Here's your last chance. I like it. The recording speed by default is set to the highest, but you can choose something slower. I don't know why, but I always like burning it fast. And then click next and then just give it the time it needs to go ahead and burn that information to the disk. Well, that was fast. There wasn't much to burn to that disk. Once it's done, the uh, disk drive ejects, and then all I have to do is give it to somebody else. They put it in their disk drive, and then if they gave it to me, I would go ahead and push it in. Let me go ahead and close out of this window here. Click off in a blank area. Wait 5 or 10 seconds for it to read the disk, and then when it reads it, it'll give me a little window and say, well, what do you want to do with the disk? Okay, do you want to go ahead and import any pictures or videos on the disk, create the disk, download the images? I always say open up, let me view the contents on the disk. So there's the contents, and here's the hidden file that comes with the disk that, well, I wouldn't recommend messing with it. I have my computer set up to show me hidden files. And then what I like doing, instead of leaving the contents on the disk, because I find if I open the contents on the disk, like double click and open this up. If it's a large file, it takes quite a bit of time to be able to load that information up. Instead, I'll go ahead and restore it down and select the contents on the disk and click and drag them to my desktop or right click and create a folder and click on folder, maybe just a temporary folder, click off in a blank area. Click and drag all seven of them. You can see the seven and copy them to the folder. The disk drive or the hard drive of the computer is a lot faster at pulling up information, large amounts of information, than just reading it directly off of the CD or the DVD or Blu-ray. So then I can double click, open that up, and when I'm done, close out and right click on it and delete it. And of course I still have my CD. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. 
can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.